How are you? I thought, I thought good. It will be better if we just talk because uh, this ongoing story is quite complicated altogether. So what we see on the score is the second round. Second round? Uh, oh, it's the second round and my father didn't participate. He was invited to join from second round because in 1956 he won the first prize in Leeds International in Budapest. Understood. And there was... Yes, and there was a rule that uh, first prize winners, or any prize winners, I don't even remember, but I think first prize winners don't have to take part in the first round. Understood. So that's what it was. As you see, his marks are very high. I think it reflected the, the, the whole situation. But in the final, I think everyone knows that Van Plazen gave an outstanding performance of Marina of Concierto number three, and Tchaikovsky as well. My father... Uh, was preparing for the competition at the last moment. Uh, he was uh, kind of pushed, asked to to prepare, but it's not to say that he didn't want to, uh, but he had to learn the Tchaikovsky in the very last uh, moment. Got it. Um, so that was very new. Well, my, my father loved uh, Van Kleiben playing. He was very fond of him, so there was no controversy. But as you can see, all this rumor about zeros and everything, it's all complete lies. Yes, lies. Um, so it's uh, the, the the document is kept in the Glinka Museum in Moscow. Yes, I went uh, to the site. I, it, there's no English translation, but I went to the site. I saw it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So my sister made quite an investigation. She's not a musician, but she's a very good daughter. <laughs> so she's done a lot to find out that, uh, about what actually happened. Yes. Uh, and because I think the whole story became very political and it was kind of fashionable to say certain things about them and then my father and whatever uh, was making a hot, spicy news. <laughs> yes. Uh, it, it was all used somewhat, but much of it is untrue. Uh, of course, uh, the regime we had uh, and all that belongs to it is correct, but it's nothing to do with how my father played and um, uh, whatever happened <laughs> in that way. Yes, and you, you are absolutely right. You found this uh, um, quotations from the house and from Richter. They were very fond of uh, Lev uh, playing, so uh, that also uh, tells you the true story, I suppose. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, like my father didn't really cooperate with uh, KGB or anyone. No. He was asked. To, he was asked to do that. Yes. But he said no, and therefore he was locked in the country for uh, for a long time. Oh no! Uh, damaged his career quite a bit. No. He was allowed to go abroad. Oh no! Um. Uh, so uh, that is true, um, and he wasn't very. Uh, you know, how to say, political person at all. He always focused on music and art. But I think the authority considered him pretty dangerous because he knew many languages and could speak freely with any foreigners. <laughs> that was scary for them, I think. But he did have many friends abroad. Uh, he was such a likable person, and he would never hesitate to invite them to our place without asking any permission, which was a <laughs> kind of a rule. Wait, and he, uh, would, he would never invite who to, to your house? He was, uh, our house, our home, the flat, was almost always open for any guests, friends, you know, full of guests, students, and uh, whenever his friends from abroad would come to Moscow, he would invite them to our place for dinner. It was a very hospitable yes. um, situation, but that was not uh, encouraged by authorities because you were supposed to ask permission oh. uh, before before you invite foreigners, and he has never done it. I oh. uh, didn't feel <laughs> right about it, obviously. So that's probably um, something they didn't like either. So, um, in a way, that, that's why he wasn't traveling abroad so much and he he would have done a lot more if he would 
be allowed. <laughs> that situation, and it, there was a similar situation with myself as well. Really? Yes, yes. Uh, in my competitions, you know, the first one in Vienna. Yes. Um, yes, after that I was invited uh, back, but because I wasn't... Well, I mean, in many, many ways, I'm similar to my father, I believe. <laughs> um, I wasn't cooperating with certain organizations. They just said that this artist, this pianist is unwell, sick, but another one is ready to go. So someone already saw my adverti advertisements in Vienna, actually, but uh, I never made it. <laughs> so, and the similar story was after my, I won a prize in, in Busoni International. They asked me to have a tour of Italy. So some people liked my playing. But the KGB person who was present with the Soviet group, he made contact with Moscow and they said she needs to come back to motherland. Ah. Yeah, so that was, uh, that was my career as well. It's very brave of you and your father to... Say no to KGB. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. It's a very difficult thing to do, I no, imagine. No, no, I, I was not in contact with KGB. It was my father, I think, at this time after Tchaikovsky competition. But I, they did invite me to join the Communist Party, and I said no to that. Shostakovich joined Communist Party. Yes, he did, and many had to. And uh, that is something my father did as well, because... Uh, he was the head of piano, and they said he can't remain the head of or be nominated head of piano if he's not a member of Communist Party. Yeah. So that was done, but I managed to escape that. Thank goodness. Because it was a, already a later time; it was a little bit more <laughs> relaxed, I suppose. Yes. Um, um, what year was it, roughly? Me? Yeah. Uh, that was. With me, it was, with my father, uh, well, I don't remember, quite frankly, but me was after I won my competition. Uh, they said that I'm uh, kind of a public person and so on, and it would be good if I can join the party, but I actually said that I don't think I'm ready. I'm still a little bit immature. <laughs> my father's career fully belongs to Soviet, heavy Soviet times. With my situation, kind of in my, my generation, the life kind of broke on two. When the perestroika started and so on, it was very turbulent time. And um, Oleg and myself, we both felt that there is no future there. People will not think about music in those times. So much crime and so much turbulence was in the 90s when we left the country. So that's the difference. Yes. Uh, I suppose, yeah. How did Vlev Vazenko eventually get out of the country? He didn't get out of the country. But he died in Brisbane. Um, oh, yes. But, you know, like, uh, he was head of piano at the Moscow Conservatory. Then they invited him to go to state. So he was teaching at Indiana University and in Boston School of Music. And he, they were flying him around America. Ah, uh, Russian uh, government so was. was. No, 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 no. Uh, that was later. It was already more relaxed, so he was able. You know, he, he they locked him in the country for about 13 years. 13. Uh, but that later, it, they kind of relaxed it. So uh, he was allowed to travel. That was already what in, after Gorbachev came into power, uh, 85. So so he was he was very popular and had a lot of invitations to go. As a jury member, as a master classes and, and some concerts and so on. Uh, so he accepted to be in America, but he still uh, kept his position in Moscow. But then he got very ill, unfortunately. Oh. So uh, I went to uh, space and took both of my parents to Australia because I wanted, we wanted them to be with us in this situation. So he stayed in Australia for about a year and a half yes. till he died. Yes. Till he died. Ah. He was teaching a little bit and uh, he was given an honorary doctor from Briggs University here. Very good. Um, yeah, so at least we were together. But So there were two ceremonies when he died. One was 
uh, in Brisbane. And then we took ashes to Moscow. There was a big one in Great Hall of Moscow Conservatory with Russian National Orchestra and with a lot of people there and so on. Wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can I ask, Natasha, the quotes that I sent, for, which had quotes from uh, Nigaus, is that how you say it? Nigaus? Neuhaus. Neuhaus. Neuhaus, because, you know, Alexander Gavriliuk? Yes. He told me that Neuhaus was pronounced Nigaus. Is this wrong? I, that's in Russian, we pronounce it Nigaus, but I, I, I would say you should say Neuhaus, because it's a German, he's from the German descent, and that's how it's pronounced. Understood. And they, I heard Russian pronunciation of Vlasenko, it, it's... Vlasenko. But look, don't do that here in Australia, because I think people probably know this name, because of the competition, it's pronounced as Vlasenko, so um, I, I'd keep it like that. Yes, so Vlasenko, and the emphasis on sen, the second syllable. Yeah. Vlasenko. And That's how they claim my name. Yeah. The the quotes from Richter and Nagel, uh, and Neuhaus were accurate. I think so. I, I look. I um. I did. You, you must have took them from somewhere, did you? I took them from Wikipedia, and there was six more, all great artists, saying that Lev is a great artist, and so on. Yes. Yes. No, I think they were accurate. That, that, that's what. Yes, it was, yeah. Yes, good. And can I ask, on this document, the scores from second round, there's a total of three rounds, is that correct? Yes, yes. And in the um, in the final round, your father played Tchaikovsky, Van played Rat 3. No, my father played Liszt Concerto number 2. In final round? Uh, yes, yes. And he played Tchaikovsky and Liszt Concerto number 2. You have to play 2. Yes, yes. But I don't think... There is a score. I'm not sure there's a score for the for the third round. I don't, yeah, I understand. No score for third round. There's no document. Third round. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe it is somewhere. But in the third round, obviously, uh, Ben scored higher than my father. Obviously, um, I think written. this score already shows you know the le- leading people. The other person that scored the 404 was that the Chinese man. Yes, yes, Rusha Kun. Yes, and then going from top of the jurors, who? What is A Bach, and then and what are the names of the people on the le- on the left hand column? You mean the jury members? Yeah. Look, this is yeah. You know, I don't mind. You can ask um, um, Samurai probably if yes. you want the translations of everything. It's no problem. Okay. Uh, I actually want people to know that. Yes, of course. More people know this, it will be better because it's just, you know, we keep fighting, my, my sister and myself, uh, uh, trying to get the, the truth out, uh, and it pops uh, wrong all over the world, you know. People see it's a very spicy uh, and kind of um, hot news. It looks, looks good because it, you know, uh, creates some... Propaganda. Uh, propaganda, yes. <laughs> right. Propaganda for America and USSR, but neither, I don't want propaganda, I just want the truth. Yeah, exactly, you know, that's how it was, you know. Uh, and the, the last thing on, on my father's mind was, was the political <laughs> of course. fighting or whatever situation. He was, you know, fully uh, absorbing his music, you know. You know I understand completely. I will do everything I can to set the record straight. Yeah, yeah, that will be good, uh, you know, because we already had even one of the sponsors of the Lev Lasenko Piano Competition, who is a friend of ours. He saw something in um, American book, and he came back to us, and we actually sent the score to him, so <laughs> uh, more people know about this, it's better, I think. Yes, indeed. It's important people know the truth. Yes, yes. And his legacy is, is enormous, you know, people... Uh, all over the world, and uh, in Moscow, the festivals and his memory music school are named after him. So, um, I mean, he was a great man. Indeed. I heard his list sonata, and I just couldn't believe it. I listened to it again and again and again. So, it yeah. was so wonderful, you know. It is. Thank all you right, very so much. Not and, a problem. Uh, we'll it's, keep in touch. it's really wonderful to hear this music and tell this story. So, thank you. 
Thank you too. Okay. Okay. All right. Bye for now. Talk soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.